In this lecture, we're going to be talking more in depth about pain. And we're going to look at the fact that there are kind of two types of pain as we know it. Pain as an input comes from a physiological injury. So you've slammed your thumb in the door, nociception occurs, so the nociceptors are active, you feel pain going up to your brain. Okay, so that is nociceptive, painful, um, and it's due to some sort of tissue injury. Now, we will see that there's also a second type of pain, and this is one of the types of pain that we are going to see more consistently. I would say that your average patient is very familiar with pain as an input, but not very familiar with pain as an output. Pain as an output is an occurrence that occurs within your brain where your brain is trying to protect you, or in the patient's case, protect the patient from further injury, but there's no physiological injury going on. It's a protective mechanism to make sure that you don't get injured. So pain as an output, um, so a signal coming out of the brain that says you're hurting even though nothing is actually wrong. Now this can be problematic because a patient doesn't understand that. Patients uh, and the general public recognize pain as an input, but not pain as an output. So this is going to be hard for this patient psychosomatically and potentially socially um, because no one understands this concept. So when we look at pain, we're going to see that deep within the brain, there are multiple areas involved in uh, the outputting of pain or the protective mechanism of pain. And our brain, different areas of our brain can either inhibit uh, a pain signal going out, okay, so tell the patient that this is not as painful as they think, or they can facilitate or increase the signal, telling the patient that this is very, this could be very painful. Don't do this, you're gonna get hurt. And we remember that there is an emotional component to pain. So the way that you are feeling and the feelings associated with pain can increase or decrease the amount of pain signal that is rolling around deep in the cortex. Uh, and that when we have this emotional component to pain, it's not just that sensation due to injury anymore, it's something else. It's deep within the brain that is creating this painful signal and protecting the patient, ideally. Now, there are different areas in the brain that are going to be active to create this signal. Uh, and we're going to call these areas together conjunctively as a pain matrix. Now, together, these areas work together to create Together, they work together, uh, duh, okay? But together, they are going to create what's called a neurotag. So for every activity that you do that potentially could cause harm, these areas of the brain are going to tag them all together so that we don't do this again, so that you are protecting your body. It's creating a pain memory of an activity so that way it remembers it for next time and will give you a pain signal early so that you don't do this again and you don't create physiological injury. So, for example, <clears throat> There was a story about this gentleman who uh, was hiking in the desert and he's hiking along and he uh, feels this prick on his leg. Okay, he gets and he's like, oh my goodness, I just got stung by a cactus. Ugh, you know, I know cactus is cacti can't sting, but we'll say it's a jumping cactus, right? So he just got pricked by the cactus. And uh, he's like, oh man. And he takes two more steps and completely passes out. Okay? And he wakes up. Uh, three months later in the emergency room, and he's been on a ventilator, he ended up, that stick was not a cactus, it was a very poisonous scorpion that he got stung by. And he uh, has been on a ventilator, he's been incapacitated, he has to rehab, and he rehabs for years, and uh, you know, this was a, a very traumatic injury, right? So he finally gets better and he goes back out hiking and you're like, okay, you know, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again, but you know, he wants to get some exercise. So he goes back out hiking again. And this time while he's hiking, he gets uh, pricked. And this time he sees it happen. He sees that he brushed up against a cactus and he gets pricked by that cactus. Just a little poke, right? Just a tiny little prick. But his brain now has been conditioned by that little prick. That little poke that he felt felt exactly the same as when he got stung by the scorpion. And his brain has created this tag around when I feel this sensation, this is what occurs. When I feel this little prick, 
I end up in the hospital. I end up on a ventilator. I end up almost dying. Okay? And this is bad news, right? So his brain is so preconditioned to that, that it tends, it sends out this agonizing pain signal that, because pain is, pain tells us something. Pain tells us that we need to go get help, right? So it sends out this agonizing signal and this patient then goes down in like severe 10 out of 10 pain from this little prick. It's not the perk, right? It's all of that emotional memory that we have going on. So if we look at here is our pain matrix, all of these different areas uh, play a role. So the thalamus intensifies that potentially, or the amygdala is fearful, and the hypo or hippocampus has memories associated with this. So we'll see that we have areas that can um, maybe potentially reduce the amount of pain, uh, and areas that maybe increase the amount of pain. So when you're scared of something and you're scared that it's going to hurt, that's going to increase your pain. If you're paying attention, you know, if sometimes, you know, you have a, a injury and all you can do is focus on that and you can't get your attention away from that, that's going to increase the pain signal. Um, potentially, if you're stressed out, that's going to have an increase in the pain. Uh, hormonal changes can increase your pain. Versus over here, a memory that is associated with with a positive memory or a signal associated with positive memory or can you make it a happy memory? Can you think it through? Can you problem solve through it that this really shouldn't be painful? Uh, is there a reward for going through the pain and therefore can have a positive outcome? So all of these might have an impact on reducing or inhibiting the pain. So for example, if you were told that if you walk across uh, these flames, someone will give you a million dollars, you might be willing to endure the pain for the reward. So there's a lot of different things can can uh, affect the pain on both sides of this uh, equation here.